Welcome to my new calculus site. My name is John Gabriel. So today I'd like to talk about line integrals. But before I start, I'd like to mention that I checked the Wikipedia entry. And this is the entry over here. And it says that in mathematics, a line integral is an integral where the function to be integrated is evaluated along a curve. Well, actually, that's true of every integral, by the way. And I'll explain shortly why. But the funny part is this. I actually responded to a question on the talk page, which says, what is it? So this person said, I have to say that this article offers no basic explanation or definition as called for by whatever uh, the requirements are here. It states that it is an integral where the function to be integrated is evaluated along a path or a curve, which doesn't really offer not an definition, a definition that would be understandable to someone who doesn't already know what it is because it's too vague and ambiguous to really understand. I definitely think the introduction should be rewritten. So. This guy here is an honest academic, whoever wrote this. I don't know who wrote this, but it's true. So I, I, I haven't actually responded on Wikipedia for a long time because it's really a, a, a worthless site in my opinion, and I don't waste my time on it. But so I did post a comment which didn't last very long at all. In fact, uh, I think it was removed within five minutes, if I'm not mistaken. And so I'm going to tell you now very shortly what I posted uh, as an answer to this uh, academic's question. He's quite right, by the way. And so let's, let's see what is an integral. So if you uh, take a look at my, if you take a look at any mainstream textbook, chances are good that you will find this definition that you see in Wikipedia because it's pretty uh, common. And it's also laughable, as I said, because every integral is evaluated along a curve. Uh, for example, is y equals 0 not a smooth curve? Absolutely it is. y equals 0 is the x-axis. And is x equals 0 not a smooth curve? Again, that's the y-axis, and both of them are smooth curves. So the methods of calculus apply only to smooth curves. Um, but what is the justification for a line integral, and how exactly is it different from any other, in any other definite integral? The short answer is that it isn't uh, different at all, and both are defined as the product of two arithmetic means, as revealed in my new calculus uh, many years ago. So this is basically the definition of a standard integral, as I show you here, and you can read all about it in my free ebook on an introduction to the single variable new calculus. So. Uh, but how did the line integral come about? And I call it a line integral because it's only special in the sense that uh, it is realized through physics. Okay, so you can't actually understand the line integral unless you understand physics. And so when you first started out uh, in high school and you did Newtonian mechanics, you learned of the formula for force, which is work times distance. So force is measured in newton meters or joules, or the product of joules times meters. Now joules is work or energy. And of course, um, one newton meter is the absolute force that is necessary to impart a mass of one kilogram with an acceleration of one meter per second. Okay, and of course work is equal to mass divided by acceleration squared. So we can see from this uh, relation here that work is a function of time and so is a joule and we can see that if we multiply these two together we'll get a newton okay and a newton is expressed as a kilogram in terms of meters per second squared in other words one kilogram per acceleration all right so now if we take a look at this graph here, we see it's a graph of work against distance, and this is uh, typically what how the, the line integral is realized. We want to calculate the area under this curve, but we have to do certain things first. Okay, We can't just go ahead and do it because uh, the x-axis becomes the distance in a, in, a, in, a definite, in a definite integral. Okay, So the problem is the correlation between the distance and the time. 
And in the above diagram, you can only calculate the force exerted between given distances and calibrate it uh, according to the units of the x-axis. So thus, if we can parameterize x in terms of the time t and state the work done also in terms of time, then we can determine the force. So let's look at a simple example. So this sign here means uh, a, a line or contour integral. You don't have to write the circle anymore, but generally we do that when we're dealing with a path integral or a line integral. And every, if, even the common standard integral is in effect a line integral because it's uh, evaluated along the x-axis. So uh, <clears throat> the path of integration is the x-axis, okay? And so uh, to evaluate that integral, let's use the example of 4x cubed. And what you see here in this uh, formula here is a description of arc length where I'm pointing with my cursor the square root of the first derivative of y with respect to x squared plus uh, the derivative of uh, x divided by itself squared. So this will always be 1, okay? And, and you'll normally see this as 1 plus dy over dx squared. So this expression here is arc length, but dy to dx is equal to 0 because y is equal to 0, right? So essentially what you end up having is the evaluation of this integral here, which is no longer a, a contour, well, it's no longer a contour integral in the sense that we're uh, looking at a product of work and distance, okay? So, and the evaluation of this integral is 16. So, uh, arc length acts as a scaling factor where the arithmetic mean of the horizontal line length is concerned. So, for example, if you had to use y is equal to x, then the scaling factor would be root 2, right? As you see over here, the derivative of y with respect to x is just 1, squared is 1, and uh, the, product, the quotient of dx with itself is 1, and so it turns out to be root 2, meaning the above integral would evaluate to 16 times root 2, and not 16 as shown when y is equal to 0. So... What this means is that integration takes place along a curve that is calibrated in units of root 2. But the value of the arc length can either increase or decrease the integral value because it is a multiplicant of the product being integrated, i.e. work times distance. So more often than not, it is desired to determine the force along a path other than the x-axis. In the previous example, the distance is given by ds is equal to the expression you see here, and we could rewrite this as what you see in, uh, over here, where I'm pointing with my cursor, the, the integral with respect to the curve C of 4x cubed and uh, taken with respect to arc length, which is ds, okay? So let's keep the same exa example, but consider a, distant, consider a different distance curve or path. So if we look at this example where C is this curve here, it's made up of pieces, smooth pieces, the green piece, the red piece, and the blue piece. By the way, uh, a line integral is, is something that actually immediately uh, refutes everything that mainstream academics say about calculus working on non-smooth curves, because the only way you can evaluate a line integral is to evaluate it piece by piece. So you cannot evaluate this as one whole function because it's not. And there, there is no such thing as, as a piecewise function, okay? A function, by definition, consists of one rule. So what do you think uh, the integral will be from uh, minus 2 to 0? And so this is pretty advanced, and you need to have studied this before in order to understand, but I'm sure some of you have, and that's why I'm talking about it. C1 is parameterized as x is equal to t, y is equal to minus 1, and t lies between 0 and minus 2. So if you calculate this integral from 0 to minus 2, as you see I'm doing here, and it doesn't matter that I've written dt because uh, I could have written dx as well, but I've parameter parameterized it with time, and that's why I've written it down this way. So it's not surprising that we get minus 16 because only the sign has changed, and this integral is equal to this integral that you see on the right. And the only thing that has happened is the direction of integration, okay? In both cases, it's exactly two units. So 
C1 is equivalent in length to the x-axis from 0 to 2. The remaining curves are parameter parameterized, as you see here, C2 and C3, with the intervals, as shown. And I'll leave the integrals for C2 and C3 as an exercise, but the answers you should get are C2 is approximately equal to 2.268, and C3, and C3 is equal to 8. So the line integral is usually given by the sum of all the curves, and it turns out to be minus 5.732. Uh, you, you might ask yourself initially how the second one here could be a positive value. Well, because it's not, the integral actually being evaluated isn't this curve itself, but 4x cubed along this curve, okay? So, so the, the, the idea about if you're integrating a value beneath the x-axis being negative, is no longer the case, negative or positive above, it's no longer the case with line integrals. So we can now produce a general definition, an integral in which one of the arithmetic means is a product of arc length of a given function with another function is called a line integral. And that, my friends, is what is a line integral and what, that, what the answer to the question on Wikipedia is, what is it? So what these mainstream academics who are real reptiles do is they learn these things by heart. They never really understand them. And all you, all you have here is an introduction of the scaling factor as arc length, and the evaluation of a given line integral is identical to that of a standard integral. In other words, a product of two arithmetic means. So uh, just to go back to what I said, in Newtonian physics is based on these fundamental concepts and extended using calculus if and only if a smooth model is available, is, a, is applicable. And what does this mean? It means that one can only use concepts such as distance, velocity, and acceleration, as you see here, in terms of a distance function s, if there is a smooth function s, okay? In other words, if s exists as a smooth function. Otherwise, you can't use calculus at all, right? There's no such thing as an instantaneous rate of change like that idiot Gilbert Strang from MIT says, or any other professor, okay? So it's not possible. Uh, and in fact, calculus uh, is not used in displaying the speed of a rocket or a spaceship. It's not used in any way in computing. And in most cases, calculus is used in engineering, where it is required to find areas and volumes. Okay. In other words, there are smooth functions. So a line integral works on a curve that is not necessarily smooth, but this is possible only because each smooth section of the curve is considered individually. So in reality, a line integral works only on one smooth function at a time. And mainstream academics hate me for this. Uh, actually, they hate everything I say because I expose their ignorance. Uh, other related concepts, uh, some of which I have covered in previous videos, but are related to the line integral, which is very useful in physics, but uh, easily to understand in the new calculus, much easier than it is in the mainstream calculus, are these concepts here. The fundamental theorem of line integrals, Stokes, Kerlin divergence, gradient vector, Green's, uh, I have a very interesting explanation of Green's theorem, which I've never shared, and I, and I shall not, because uh, I know mainstream academics do not understand it. Um, so, in any case, this is what I wanted to explain to you about line integral. And uh, hopefully, in another video, I'll talk a little bit more about physics. I had been promising you some time ago a, a video on physics, and this is the second one on physics. The video that I refer to here is on the concept of how we is on the topic of how we realize the concept of time. So if you don't understand these things, you should probably watch that video first. Well, I'm totally out of breath now. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe. Spread the news of this channel. I am trying to correct mainstream mathematics. Don't know whether I'll succeed or not, but that's one of my goals. And I haven't given up yet, <laughs> uh, but time will tell whether this is going to be a successful uh, endeavor or not. Once again, thanks to all those who have been supporting me on YouTube. Uh, I am against the ma mainstream. I have received several death threats over the number of years that I've been revealing these things to uh, the mainstream. Several of my Websites have been shut down and I've been banned from several other forums simply because they do not like my ideas. 
Uh, they might give reasons such as inappropriate comments or whatnot, but that's not the truth. 